Well, welcome back, everybody. If you have been around here for a long time, you may remember that I installed my fuel senders in the top of my fuel tank, both in the Super Duty and the Cruiser. So on the top of the wing on my Cruiser, you can see this right here is where I have the fuel sender. And you'll notice I have a little fiberglass dome that I made to go over that. And that is just because in the Cruiser and the fuel senders that I used, they do stick up a little bit out of the top of the wing. So I had to make this cover here. You can see that just bubbles up a little bit to cover that fuel sender. Now in the Super Duty, you can see that the fuel senders do sit below the skin. So all I need to do on the Super Duty is put a flat cover over the uh, sender. If we take a look at the right wing, this is what the cover looks like over the fuel sender. Now you might wonder what's the point in mounting the fuel sender on the top of the fuel tank as opposed to the factory location, which is on the side of the tank. Now let's just say someday you walk out to your handy dandy cruiser and you notice fuel dripping from the bottom of the wing. You guess that it's the fuel sender leaking and you need to replace the fuel sender. Well, how do you do that? There is an access cover right here, but there's no way you're gonna change a fuel sender through that access cover. So if your sender is mounted on the side of your fuel tank, you will then have to remove your wing from the airplane. You will have to drill out all of the rivets that hold this inner skin to the frame. And who wants to drill out rivets on a painted wing then you'll have access to change your fuel sender. Now, if you mount your fuel sender on the top of the wing and you need to change your fuel sender, well, in this case, all I have to do is drill out five little tiny rivets, take this cover off, and I have access to my fuel sender. I can cut away the pro seal that, that seals up the sender. I can lift it straight out of the tank, put a new one on, and then rivet my cover back in place. Well, very early on in the build process of this Super Duty, I did make a video on how I mounted a fuel sender in the wing, but that video kind of got lost on my channel. It is there. In fact, I think it's episode 17. But what I did on this video is I, I went back to that video and cut out the part that just deals with mounting the fuel sender. And I'm gonna repost it here. Because that video kind of got lost on my channel, a few people have asked, which video that fuel sender was in and I didn't even know. In fact, somebody else found it for me and, and reposted it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I just wanted to, to cut that out, put it in this video. So there's a brand new video with a title that indicates this is a fuel sender video for anyone that might wanna see how I did it. If you wanna watch this video and get some tips and pointers on how I mounted a fuel sender, well then I hope it helps you out. So here we go. All right guys, I have my fuel tank sitting up on its front edge. I have my hole drilled. I used a fly cutter to do this in a handheld drill. And it's very tricky to do because the top is not completely flat. So the fly cutter will tend to hit in, in some spots and not other spots. So I did this with a fly cutter and a Dremel and a whole bunch of other tools like a sledgehammer and a chainsaw and, a, and an ax to cut this out. So once you have your hole cut out, the idea is to make the hole as small as possible. And the way I test it to see if it fits is I take this ring that's from the fuel sender and I put the screws in it so they're sticking out. And I just put this in here like this and you can see mine right now. Let me zoom in for you here. So right now, mine doesn't fit in here. So I, I need to keep opening up this hole a little bit, which is good because I'd much rather drill a hole that's too small than too big. Now there's a few ways you can open this up. You can use a deburring tool like this or just keep going around it with sandpaper. But I like to use this tool for, it's a little bit quicker and easier. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tilt this forward so when I go around here, I'm just trying to get as many shavings as I can on the outside of the tank. And it'll just take off a little bit at a time until this almost fits. Let's go around there again. Oh, a little bit more.
Oh, almost fits. I'm gonna go around again. That's pretty good. I think for now, I'm just gonna take some sandpaper. All right, now this will fit in here. This hole is as small as possible to still let this fit. So we can move on to the next step. No matter how careful you are, you're going to get metal shavings in here and aluminum dust. So we do need to flush out the fuel tanks. And in this wing here, the right wing, I had to flush out this fuel tank four times to get everything out of it. So I will flush this fuel tank out. And I actually use gasoline to flush it just because I don't want any other liquids in there. So I'll just pour a little bit of gasoline in, swish it around, dump it out until the inside of the tank is clean. I did flush out the fuel tank actually a couple times, but I try to use a paper towel here just to scoop up any other little chips or something that I might find in the tank. Take a good close look in your tank too and make sure there's no shavings that are caught up in the this, this screen or any of the corners of the tank. If you use gasoline to flush your tank, go ahead and use some MEK or some other solvent and really wash around the opening here because later on we're going to put some sealant on the fuel sender and if there's any oil from the fuel, it will not stick to the tank. So make sure it is perfectly clean around the hole. What I'm doing here is just scuffing up about a quarter of an inch around the perimeter of that hole. And again, that's just to get the pro seal or the, the sealant to stick to the tank better. This is what it looks like, just about a quarter inch around. Just go ahead and scuff it up a little bit. And also when you're done, make sure you clean it again with some alcohol or some other solvent. All right, we have our hole ready to go. We have our fuel sender just about ready to go. One of the things I wanted to show you is on this ring, you can see this little cutout I make on there. And that's just to help you slide it into the wing just a little bit easier. And I do that just by putting it on the corner of the grinder. And I just get a nice little divot in there. Now I know a lot of you are wondering what fuel sender I'm using because in my uh, cruiser, I use the Vans RV fuel senders and I notice no difference in quality between the Vans senders and the stock senders from Zenith. In fact, they come with the exact same rings and hardware. They're both made out of the same cheap metal I just don't think there's any reason to go with the Vans uh, fuel senders. Now I will tell you a problem I had on the cruiser when I built the tanks, you know, like I said, I used the Vans RV senders. And then when I filled the tanks for the first time, what you do is you put a gallon in at a time and on your Dynon screen, you calibrate it. Well, the problem I was having was my fuel senders, you can see you're right under this hump right there the fuel senders weren't moving. So I was putting fuel in, but the floats were not riding on top of the fuel. So I had to actually go in from the filler cap and bend a long piece of aluminum tubing to try to get over there and just work that sender up and down and up and down and up and down to loosen it up. And I had to do that on both wings. I don't know why they got tight and the floats didn't float. They work fine now after I loosened them up but it's kind of scary. I almost thought I was gonna to have to rip the fuel uh, senders out of the tanks, but I got that working. And one of the things I like about these Zenith senders are that they seem 
just out of the box, they seem to be a lot looser than the Vans RV ones. They move a lot freer. And like I said, they're, they're a little bit different, but they're made out of the same metal. I don't think these are any worse quality than the ones that the Vans RV uses. So I am installing the stock Zenith fuel senders. Now the way this works with these senders is they give you this rubber gasket here that goes on here. And then on the inside of the tank, this ring will go on here, the screws go in and then it tightens up. And if you think you could install this and have this gasket here prevent leaks, then good luck to you. You'll be ripping your fuel sender out probably very quickly. So what you need to do is you need to go to vansaircraft.com and order some, oh, everybody calls it Pro Seal. I don't know if that's the real name. It's from 3M. And what it is, is a little tube of, or it's not a, well, a little container, of uh, basically fuel tank sealant. And we used to use this stuff on the F-16 to seal the canopy. And it's just, it's nasty to work with. Um, and then we actually, after a while, they came out with a, they call it a dry seal that, that goes around the bottom of the canopy that we didn't have to use this anymore. But I used this on my, my RV-7 for the tanks. I used it in the cruiser, and now I'm using it in this uh, Super Duty. I think these are, oh, what did I pay? I think they're about $15. And there's enough here to do both fuel tanks, but I really recommend you buy two of them. Use one for one tank, one for the other tank. The reason why is if you mix this up and try to do both tanks at once, you really are going to have to rush before this starts to kind of harden up a little bit. So, you know, you could do both tanks with one of these, but I would suggest you get two so you don't have to rush. Just use one for one tank, and then when you're ready, do the other tank and open up another uh, container of this. So anyway, we're gonna put this in. We're still gonna use this rubber seal, but then you're gonna see I'm going to seal everything with this. And one of the things I wanted to point out is, you know, this has this metal contactor that, that goes through here to read the resistance on this, right? It's basically just a big potentiometer. So where this goes, I know you're not gonna be able to see this in the camera here. I'll try to put a picture on the screen, but where this goes through in here I'm going to put a little bit of that pro seal around there just to help prevent any possible leaks from there. And then you'll see, I'm gonna put pro seal all around here. I'll put all around the perimeter and then all around the screws. In fact, you can see that on my right wing tank that is already done. If you look at the right wing here, you can see I have pro seal around all the screws. I have it around the perimeter of this and then all the way around the outside. That's the exact same thing I did on the cruiser, and I don't have any leaks on that one, and I'm not, or I'm hoping I don't have any leaks on this one either. Now before we put this in, one of the things I wanted to mention is, go ahead and put a little mark with a permanent marker here where the float is, because once this is in the tank, you wanna know where to put this. The other thing I'd recommend is, before you mix up your pro seal and get this all messy, Go ahead and put this in and just make sure that it, it does actually fit inside the hole. On mine, it, instead of grinding the hole a little bit larger, I actually took a little bit of material off of the edge of this ring to get it in there. So mine fits in there nicely now, so I'll go ahead and mix up that Pro Seal and we can get this thing installed.
what I'm doing here is just spreading a thin layer around the perimeter of the hole right over that quarter inch area that we roughed up with the sandpaper. This is going to be sealant that goes under the rubber gasket that uh, is on the fuel sender. And this is what it looks like after I am done spreading it on the hole. Well, let's get this fuel sender installed into the fuel tank. I'm putting this scribe into one of the holes and what that does, it just lines up that plate that's on the inside of the tank because as you tighten this screw, that plate's going to want to move a little bit and then the screw holes won't be aligned up. So I just keep that in there long enough just to get the screws in. Once a couple screws are in, then you won't need it anymore. And don't forget to add a ground wire to one of your bolts. And again, I'm just putting Pro Seal here around the perimeter of the fuel sender, just in case any fuel happens to leak past that rubber gasket. Hopefully, the Pro Seal will stop any further leaks. And I'm also going to spread a little bit of around, around the perimeter of the screws and then also that white plastic center section on the fuel sender. When I'm done, I like to take a real close look with the flashlight at the Pro Seal because it is easy to miss a little tiny spot or have a little pinhole or something that's not quite covered with the Pro Seal. So inspect it really good. So if you're wondering how to mount the fuel senders on the top of the wing, hopefully this video gave you some tips or tricks, or sometimes just nice to see how somebody else did it and you get your own ideas for how you want to do it. If you guys are mounting your fuel senders on the top of the wing, go to kitplaneenthusiast.com because we have some really nice pre-made domes that go on the top of your wing. When I made mine, I had to make them out of fiberglass. Now they're available in a plastic that you can just pretty much drill a couple holes in and screw or rivet right to the top of your wing. And of course, while you are at the website, we do have a lot of different fairings available for the uh, 701, the 750 Stoll, the Cruiser, the Super Duty. We have fuel lines, oil lines available, and of course, our own brand of very nice seats. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again shortly in the next video.